Hey everyone, it's Colin. How's it going? Today we're going to do a little bit different of a video. It's still video game related, but it's also something that involves a lot of computer and networking work as well. What we're going to do today is extend a really cool feature built into the Nintendo 3DS, and that is Spot Pass and Street Pass. I really like the feature. I think it's pretty cool because it adds kind of social interactivity to the relatively virtual game playing experience. It actually gets you out and involved with people and places in order to get further along in your games, to get special bonuses, and in some cases to actually play the game at all. So what we're going to do is set up basically a homebrew version of Spot Pass called Home Pass. What I'm going to do is I'm basically going to take a spare network router that I have sitting here and turn it into a Spot Pass beacon that all the 3DSs in my house can then talk to and meet with other people who are doing the same thing. Now I need to get out in front of this before we get any further. This is not necessarily a set and forget solution. This could change at any time, up to and including completely breaking at Nintendo's whim. Remember, we're working on a hack of Nintendo's systems and they can change anything whenever they want for whatever reason. So it's entirely possible that by the time you're watching this video, Nintendo has completely shut down the way HomePass works and there are no workarounds. That said, this system has been working for a couple of years now and with the tweaks that Nintendo has made to the 3DS firmware, it's periodically changed the way HomePass works but hasn't completely broken it. I also need to emphasize that I'm not taking any credit for any of the legwork done in this video. The spreadsheets that I'm going to show you, the information I'm passing along, is all stuff that other people have figured out. I simply stumbled across it, thought it was a cool idea, and decided to try setting it up for myself. There are a few things that I'm doing in this video that aren't covered in their documentation, and that's simply because I want to give you a more secure experience than what their documentation provides. The way spot passes work is that they're basically open Wi-Fi networks that have been set up. Obviously that's okay if you're setting up a spot pass network specifically for that. But since we're doing this with our own home network, it's no good to add an additional open network on top of ours because that means your neighbors or people driving down the street, whatever, could jump on that network and not only use it to surf the internet however they please, but that would also leave your computers on your internal network vulnerable to potential access from them or anyone else who wants to do your harm or poke around. So what we're going to do is set this up as an additional access point in a bit more of a secure manner that keeps it isolated from your own internal network. One last thing that I should mention is don't try to set this up on a network that you don't control. Meaning don't try and set this up on the network at work or in your dorm room in college, anything like that. You're going to make network admins really pissed off. They'll probably find out, they'll probably kick you off the network and you may get in some deep trouble by doing it. So only do this with a home network where you pay for the internet access and you control the equipment end to end. All right, so all of that out of the way, let's get started with setting up your own home pass. There are a few requirements for setting up home pass, of course. If this method doesn't work for you, there are some other options which the link in the description covers. The process we're following today is setting up home pass on a spare wireless router. This makes it very easy to turn home pass on and off. Just unplug the router when you're not using it. To start, you'll need a wireless router that's capable of becoming a repeater bridge, as well as changing its wireless MAC address. Thankfully, the open source and free DDWRT firmware can do both of these, and has a pretty long list of compatible routers. I've included a link to DDWRT's supported hardware list down in the description, so be sure to follow the instructions there for installing it on your particular router if it's compatible. That's beyond the scope of this video. The spare router I'm using for HomePass is an old Linksys WRT54G that's been sitting in my closet for ages. It can easily run DDWRT and has enough horsepower to support the features we need. Another important requirement is that your existing main home wireless router needs to be able to support a guest network. This is different from your normal wireless network in that it's a separate network port or wireless SSID that's limited to only going directly to the internet. 
This means that the guest network can't access or interact with the devices on your main wired or wireless network, which is important for security. We'll leverage this guest network in order to keep the HomePass system isolated. Check with your router's manufacturer for help with setting up a guest network. So you have your HomePass router set up with a basic installation of DDWRT. Great. You'll need to do the initial configuration using an Ethernet cable as we'll be changing wireless settings shortly and you'll get locked out otherwise. Go ahead and browse to the setup page for DDWRT. Click on the setup tab so we can get some initial configuration done. On the basic setup tab, give your router a name. I just chose HomePass. And also give it a different IP address for management. You'll most likely want this address to be within the range that's set up on your main router's guest network. In my case, my main router is set up to use the 192.168.1.0 range of addresses for my private network and the 192.168.2.0 range for the guest network. So in my case, I chose 192.168.2.20 for my HomePass router's management IP. After you've made your changes, click Save, but don't click Apply Settings just yet. Click on the Mac Address Clone tab. This is a major part of what makes HomePass work. Click the Enable button, and we'll be changing what's listed next to the Clone Wireless Mac field. But what do we want to key in there? There's a particular MAC address we'll be using for this video, but that doesn't mean you don't have some flexibility. One of the links down in the description takes you to the Remote Street Pass Relay MAC spreadsheet. It's community driven, and in addition to providing instructions for setting up HomePass a number of other ways, like using a Raspberry Pi or even a shared Wi Fi connection on your PC, it contains a list of MAC addresses from actual Spot Pass relays. How HomePass really works is by making your router act as if it's one of these official relays. And because other people have set up their own HomePass routers using these same MAC addresses, you'll end up spot passing with them too. Now, Nintendo set up an 8 hour wait period before you can spot pass again at the same relay, and this restriction applies to HomePass as well, hence the reason for having many MAC addresses in the spreadsheet. Some home passers will change the MAC address of their router to another from this list in order to get around the wait period and keep spot passing. In most cases, to get started with HomePass, you'll want to use the main MAC listed in the spreadsheet. But so I can show you an interesting side effect of HomePass later in this video, I'm going to choose a different MAC to set up. In any event, key in the MAC address you want to use, then click Save. Again, don't click Apply Settings just yet. Okay, now let's configure the wireless radios. Click on the Wireless tab, then on the Basic Settings tab, and change the wireless type to Repeater Bridge. Set the wireless network mode to match that of your main router. In my case, I set it to G only. Then type in the name of your main router's wireless guest network. This name needs to match exactly, so be careful when typing it in. Make sure the network configuration is set to Bridged, then click Save. You should then have a button to add a virtual interface, so go ahead and click it. For this wireless network name, you'll want to enter what's listed in the spreadsheet next to the MAC address you picked. The two most common SSIDs at the time I made this video are ATT Wi-Fi and NZ at MICD1. In most cases, they're interchangeable. I'm using NZ at MICD1 here, but you could easily use ATT Wi-Fi if you're setting your router up with the recommended main MAC. Set Wireless SSID Broadcast to Enable, AP Isolation to Disable, and Network Configuration, again, to Bridged. Click Save. Now let's move to the Wireless Security tab. The Physical Interface section refers to the connection from your HomePass router to the guest network on your main router. The Virtual Interface section is for the new HomePass SSID. So for the Physical Interface, you'll want to configure it the same as your guest network, and then enter your guest network password in the Shared Key field. For the Virtual Interface, you need to leave this set to Disabled. This creates an open network with no password, 
which is the only way I was able to get my 3DS to successfully spot pass. Some people have reported success with enabling encryption, so you may want to play around and see if it works for you. If it does, that's an awesome thing because it greatly enhances security. In any event, once you've configured everything on this tab, click save and finally click apply settings. After a little bit, the new wireless network should be visible. As a test, go ahead and connect to it from a laptop or your 3DS and make sure you can get on the internet. If everything works correctly, in a minute or two, your handheld should greet you with the familiar green status light. Now, this last step may or may not be available on your HomePass router. It's best to enable Mac filtering in order to limit the devices that can connect to the open HomePass network, because otherwise just anyone would be able to use it to get on the internet. If your router supports this feature, you'll see multiple sections in the Mac Filter tab, one for each wireless network. Pick the last one listed, then click the Enable Radio button, then the Permit Only Clients option. Click the Edit Mac Filter List button and a new window will open. Here's where you'll want to enter the Mac addresses of all the 2DS and 3DS consoles you want to use with HomePass. If you're not sure where to find the MAC address on your handheld, simply open the System Settings panel, then tap on Internet Settings, then Other Information. Tap Confirm MAC Address, and it'll show your 2DS or 3DS's MAC address. Note that it's shown with dashes between every pair of characters, but back in the MAC Filter List window, it needs to be entered with colons instead, like this. Once you've gotten them all keyed in, scroll all the way to the bottom, then click Save and Apply Settings. Now just close the window and you're all set. In my case, my HomePass router doesn't support Mac filtering on the new wireless network. I only get the one Mac filter section, which doesn't apply to the open Wi-Fi network that's been set up. If this is the case for you too, then I think the best option is to simply turn your HomePass router on and off only when you're using it. Turn it on, wait for your 2DS or 3DS to successfully spot pass, then turn it off again. I mentioned earlier that there can be an interesting side effect to using HomePass. The MAC address I used in this video is from the Nintendo Zones tab of the spreadsheet. Specifically, I used the MAC address for a McDonald's restaurant in Germany. It works fine, and I did indeed meet some interesting people through SpotPass. But here's what happened when I tried to use Nintendo Zone. I don't know what this says, but I think it means that HomePass doesn't let you get around the regional limitations set up by Nintendo. So that actually wasn't too tough, was it? Now we've got a really awesome home pass set up so that we can get street passes whenever we want, however we want, with people all around the world. It's great. The first time I home passed with my 3DS, I met like six people from the UK and four people from states that I'd never spot passed with people before. So it's helping me get further along in my games. Now that said, I'm not going to rely on it exclusively. I do like the aspect of carrying this thing around with me to places that have legitimate spot passes and meeting up with people. So with any luck, this was just as easy for you to get set up as it was for me. If you like the video, thumbs up if you please. Subscribe if you haven't already, the button's right down there. And as always, thank you all so much for watching.